All right, so welcome back to another video of SAT prep. So we're gonna go over six questions today, ranging from algebra, geometry, and just basically all levels of math. So feel free to pause when I go through each question, try to do it yourself, and then you can try to check your answers with my explanation. So let's start. Question 13, if A, three, negative two, and B, seven, two, are the endpoints of a diameter of a circle, what is the area of the circle? So basically, we need to find the area of the circle, which is using what formula? Area of the circle is equal to pi r squared, right? So in this case, we need to find the radius, the r. How do we find that given two points, which are the diameter? We need to find the distance and divide it by two, because why? The diameter is equal to two times the radius. And proportionally, the radius is equal to diameter divided by two. So let's find the diameter first. And using these two points, we need to find the distance between them, aka we need to use the distance formula, which is what? Distance is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So let's just plug in our points, x2, x1. It's going to be square root of 3 minus 7 squared plus negative 2 minus 2 squared. Okay, simplify. 3 minus 7 is equal to 4. 4 squared is 16. Plus negative 2 minus 2 is 4. 4 squared is 16. 16 plus 16 is 32, giving you the square root of 32 as your diameter. Now, let's simplify the square root of 32. Square root of 32 is the same as 4 times 8. And then you could, 4 is a perfect square, so let's move that out, giving you 2 root 8. 2 root 8, and then you can simplify this even further, because this right here, I'm just going to move down here. 2 root 8, you can move out the 2, because it's going to be 2 root 4 times 2. There's another 4, move out the 2, that gives you 4 root 2 as your diameter. So given diameter 4 root 2, what's the radius? Radius is diameter divided by 2. 4 root 2 divided by 2 is 2 root 2. So your radius is now 2 root 2. And then what do we do to find the area of a circle? We have this formula right here, pi r squared. Plug it in. That's going to be pi times 2 root 2 squared. And that's going to be 2 root 2 squared is 4 times 2. 8 giving you 8 times pi, which is 8 pi. Meaning answer has to be C. So this question took a little bit of work, but all you need to remember are these two formulas, the distance formula and the circle formula, as well as what diameter and radius means. And once you find all those numbers, you plug it in, and that's just it. Moving on, let me just erase some of this stuff so it doesn't get in the way. We have question 14. If 13 minus 2 root x is equal to 7, what's the value of x? So this is just a simple equation that we need to solve. So let's move everything without x onto the other side. So in this case, it's going to be negative 13, because it doesn't have x attached to it. So we move it, 13 minus 13 cancels out, giving us negative 2 root x is equal to 7 minus 13, which is negative 6. Negative and negative on both sides, cancel that out, giving us 2 root x is equal to 6. 2 times root x, how do we get rid of a 2 times? We divide by 2, because that's the inverse of multiplication, division. Divide by 2 on both sides, 2 divided by 2 cancels out, giving us root x is equal to 6 divided by 2, which is 3. Now the square root of some number is equal to 3. How do we get rid of a square root? What's the inverse of a square root? It's going to be squaring it. So we square both sides. Remember, whatever you do on the left, you do on the right. So square root of x squared cancels out, giving us x is just equal to 3 squared, which is 9. So does that work? Yes, it does. Meaning answer has to be C, 9. Moving on, question 15. The state of a wealthy man was distributed as follows. 10% of it to his wife, 5% divided among, equally among his three children, 5% divided among equally among his five grandchildren, and the balance to a charitable trust. If the trust received $1 million, how much did each grandchild inherit? So basically, what we need to do for this question is we need to find out how much was given to the trust, what percentage. So 10% was given to the wife, plus 5% given to the children, and 5% given to the five grandchildren. So in total, 10 plus 5 plus 5%, 5 is 20%. That means the remaining was given to the charity, which in this case is 80%, right? 80%. 20% makes up a whole, 100%. So 80% is equal to $1 million. How much is that amount? So what is 80% written as a decimal? It's going to be 0.8. So 80% of some number x is equal to $1 million. Now, if you use a calculator to find x, we can just divide both sides by 0.8 to cancel out. 0.8 divided by 0.8 cancels out. Give you x is equal to 1 million divided by 0.8, which should give you... 
1.25 million. So it should look like this, 1,250,000. So that's the value of the total amount of money this wealthy man has. So the question is asking for how much did each grandchildren inherit? So basically, let's check out the problem. So 5% was the equally divided between five grandchildren. So if it's equally divided, 5% divided by five, it just gives us 1% per grandchildren. So each grandchildren, grandchild received 1% of the total inheritance, which was 1,250,000. So it's 1% of this number. So in order to find 1% of any number, all we have to do is move the decimal places two times. One, two. So it means the grandchild inherited 12500. 12500. 12,500, meaning your answer has to be B, the price of each grandchildren that they inherited. Okay, moving on, we have question 16. In the figure above, if PS bisects PS bisects angle RST, what is the value of W? PS bisects angle RST. What does bisect mean? It means it divides the angle into half. So this angle right here is equal to this angle because they're equally divided. So therefore, I just know this angle should be 25 because SP bisects this angle. These two angles should be equal. Now, given this information, what's the angle of w so i know that in order to find w i should probably find this angle right here how we find that we know this box what does that mean it's a 90 degree angle so it's 25 and 90 25 plus 90 plus this angle which i'll call x that should sum up to 180 degrees right because this is a triangle inside and they all sum up to 180 degrees simplify 115 plus x is equal to 180 in order to get x we just minus both sides by 115 giving us x is equal to 65. That's the measure of this angle, 65. But how do we get the measure of angle W? So, as you can see right here, this is a straight line. All straight lines sum up to how many degrees? Sums up to 180 as well. Right, circle, I mean, a triangle and a straight line have the equal number of measure. So 180 is equal to this angle right here, plus W. So it's going to be 65 plus W, straight line, 65 and W. So how do we get W by itself? Subtract 65 on both sides, giving us a 180 minus 65, which is 115, is equal to 65 minus 65 cancels out. That's just equal to W. That right there is your answer. 115 is equal to W. So all you have to need to know is that the total sum of degrees inside of a triangle is 180, and a straight line totals up to 180 as well. Okay, question 17. There are 150 people in line outside a ballpark. If Peter is the 10th person from the front and Wendy is the 110th person from the front, how many people are in between Peter and Wendy? So let's just draw. So this is the first person. And then the 10th person is Peter. And then the 110 person from the front, 110, is going to be Wendy. And then there's the 150th person, the last person. So basically, how many people are in between? So from 10 to 100. You might think simply you have to subtract. But think about it like this. From 10, from Peter's position, the 10th person, to the 12th person, how many people are in between them? There's one person, right? The number you love person. So all you have to do in order to find how many people are in between, you subtract them, subtract these two numbers, and you just minus one. In this case, the distance between Wendy and Peter are 110 minus 10, which is 100. And then you subtract an additional one behind that, giving you 99. And that's going to be your answer. So simply, all you have to do for this question is visualize what is happening, and that's it. And for our last question, question 18. In the figure above, what is the value of x? So we have a straight line. And remember from the previous question, question 16, a straight line has how many degrees in it? It's 180. So that's something to remember. So 180 is equal to the composition of x plus 2 and x plus 1. Combine like terms, x plus 2 plus x plus 1, right? You add up these two angles, and they should sum up to 180 degrees. Add them up, 180 is equal to, what's x plus x? That's 2x. 2 plus 1 is 3. Now we just have to solve for x by subtracting 3 on both sides to get x by itself. 177 is equal to 2x. 180 minus 3 is 177. Divide both sides by 2 because inverse of multiplication is division. You can check out my other videos to find out how to solve equations in case you don't know how to. Divide both sides by 2. Give you x is equal to 177 divided by 2. It's 177 divided by 2. That should be 88.5. That right there is going to be the answer for the value of x. So thank you guys for watching all the way. And if you guys have any questions regarding what I did for any of them, leave in the comments. Otherwise, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.